Hi, fifth grade. I hope you're doing well. Um, today we're going to be doing lesson 31.3, and it's talking about revival in Jerusalem. Um, and this whole week we're talking about Ezra's leadership. Ezra leads worship. But today we're going to talk about re revival in Jerusalem. So let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your love. We thank you for the opportunity to be in your word. I just pray that you would continue to guide and direct us and help us to be the people that you would have us to be. For all these things, your name. Amen. Your memory verse is in John chapter 4, verse 23, and it says, Yet a time is coming, and has now come, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and, in tr and truth, for they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. So that's John 4, 23. Yet a time is coming, and has now come, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. And then today, again, we're talking about revival in Jerusalem. Thirteen years after Ezra led the first revival, he joined Nehemiah to lead a second revival. We're going to read Nehemiah chapter 8. And we're going to read some verses in. chapter 8 okay we're going to read verses 1 through 3 first when the seven when the seventh month came and the Israelites had settled in their towns all the people assembled as one man in the in the square before the water gate they told Ezra the scribe to bring out the book of the the book of the law of Moses which the Lord had commanded for Israel so on the first day of the seventh month Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly which was made up of men and women and all who were able to understand he read it aloud from daybreak till noon as he faced the square before the water gate in the presence of the men, women, and others who could understand. And all the people listened attentively to the book of the law. Okay, then I'm going to read verse 6, 9 through 12. Ezra praised the Lord, the great God, and all the people lifted their hands and responded, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Then we're going to read 9 through 12. The Nehemiah, the governor, Ezra the priest and scribe, and the Levites, who were instru instructing the people, said to them all, This day is, a sac is sacred to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people had been weeping as they listened to the words of the law. Nehemiah said, Go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks and send some to those who have nothing prepared this day is sacred to our lord do not grieve for the joy of the lord is your strength 
the Levites, um, the Levites calmed all the people, saying, Be still, for this is a sac sacred day. Do not grieve. Then all the people went away to eat and drink, to send portions of food and to send portions of food and to celebrate with great joy because they now understood the words that had been made known to them. How did the people respond to Ezra's leadership and their relationship with God? They gathered to ask Ezra to read the book of the law. They were attentive. They paid attention. They obeyed and celebrated God's truth. How did the people respond? How did the people's response show the power of God's word? They stood for hours listening, grieving over their sins. They changed their behavior and worshiped God wholeheartedly. This day should be should have been joyful because the people's relationship with God was once again supreme have top importance. That is why Ezra the priest, Nehemiah the governor, and the Levites who were teach, teachers of God's word instructed the people not to mourn but to be joyful because now God was their strength through the day the heads of the households gathered so they would better understand the truth of God's word while studying the writings of Moses they discovered God's directive to dwell in booth booths during the Feast of Tabernacles they decided to make booths in obedience to God's word so they could celebrate this feast once again and worship God in the manner he had directed now we're going to read Nehemiah 8 18 through 9 3 Day after day, from the first day to the last, Ezra read from the book of the law of God. They celebrated the feast of seven, for seven days, and on the eighth day, in accordance with regulation, there was an assembly. On the twenty-fourth day of the same month, the Israelites gathered together, fasting and wearing sackcloth, and having, and having dust on their heads. Those of Israelite descent had separated themselves from all foreigners. They stood in their places and confessed their sins and the wickedness of their fathers. They stood where they were and read from the book of the law of the Lord their God for a quarter of the day and spent another quarter in confession and worship worshiping the Lord their God By celebrating the feast, the Israelites were also practicing corporate worship. It's important that Christians build a relationship with other believers so they will be 
able to be encouraged and encourage them as well. The important and the importance of of this concept is related in the New Testament in Hebrews ten twenty five. Believers are instructed not to forsake assembling together with other believers. In Ezra's case the result of gathering together with obedient hearts to listen to God's word were profound. The people fasted, wore sackcloth, and drew, drew dust on their heads to show sorrow for their sins. The word fast means to go without eating for a time. Sackcloth is a rough or scratchy fabric people wore in Bible days to show humility before God. The people who were of Jewish lineage stood and with repentant hearts confessed their sins and the sins of their fathers. <coughs> They knew that it was important to confess their sins. They knew that it was important to get on the right path and do what they were supposed to do. Um, we can't meet together right now because of the virus going around, but we can still be there for each other. We can still encourage each other. You know, we can send messages to one another sitting there saying, Hey, have you read your Bible today? How are you doing? Um, we're still called to be there for each other, even though we're in a different time now. So... That's it for today, 5th grade. I hope you have a great day. We'll talk to you next time. Bye. God bless.